Mm. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. As you can see, we're taking some care of, uh, you know, protecting your privacy in this uh, meeting. Although, well, of course, we're not intending to use anything for any other purposes than uh, these meetings. So a few words about myself. Uh, I've been uh, in Denmark for about like six, seven years. I'm uh, originally Bulgarian. I have experience in the startup scene that I started up my own culinary project in which I was creating events for, for people, also doing workshops, teaching people how to cook and um, catering as well, also for some fun festivals uh, during that time. Um, I believe the next session is going to be mine. So you have the chance to see more about me. Right, I'm not going to steal more of Mattia, but um, I'm going to be facilitating the session today. Going to be uh, every once in a while, if I see that, you know, Matthias is making an interesting point, I might, you know, ask a question, kind of like uh, keep it, uh, like, you know, put more focus or emphasis on, on, on the points he's making. And of course, you're going to have the time at the end, like the last half an hour to ask your own questions, which I think is going to be interesting. Um, so without further ado, a few words about Matthias. He's, uh, he's been very active in the art scene in, uh, in Copenhagen since his arrival. Um, he's, uh, he started an um, art collective called Sketchy Monday, in which dozens of people have been joining on a weekly basis. He's also been very active in creating exhibitions and different art events around the city. And uh, Matia, why don't you take from here? Yeah. Hi, everybody. And uh, uh, I am from Italy, just like Silvia, uh, lived in Copenhagen for six years. And uh, yes, Plum and said I uh, started moving myself in the in the like artistic environment since uh, my arrival in Denmark. Uh, pretty much, it took me about a, a month to get adjusted, and then I started meeting people. And um, I don't know what your backgrounds are yet and what you're interested in. So I was thinking that uh, like the kind of knowledge that I um, gathered uh, in my life in Copenhagen as an artist uh, that I could share with other people interested in starting up their own uh, businesses or companies or uh, organizations. It, it could be not so much about art, uh, but more about uh, what, it like, uh, what it is like to create a network and how I su succeeded in uh, making my own network and how I used uh, especially volunteering as a tool for that. So, and of course, if you later have questions, more questions about art uh, that like you can always ask, you can always ask things uh, while I talk. Um, there would be a little presentation uh, with like some pictures and some text, just like so to help the flow and, uh, and to help me with, uh, with rem remembering everything that I want want to say. Uh, I would like to start with a little icebreaker thing and to get to know each other. So uh, I will ask uh, Masha to divide everybody in, in breakout rooms, like two by two. And then you have uh, to do one thing with the partner uh, you will have in the breakout room is to introduce yourself to the partner. Let's give uh, this uh, five minutes max, uh, just introduce yourself, uh, say what your ambitions are and what, uh, in, what your interest in this workshop is. And uh, especially if you have a characteristic, like if you're an artist, if you are interested in, uh, in cooking. Um, and then uh, when we bring it back, like we, when we bring all of you back to this uh, common room, uh, the person that uh, introduced uh, them to you, like uh, the person that uh, you were with in the room, you will introduce them to the rest of the group. Do you understand? So if I'm uh, in the room with Plamen, then I will come back here and I will tell you about Plamen and what his ambitions are and what his expectations about the workshop are. And I will try to make him as cool, uh, to make him look as cool as I can. So, so we're talking about general ambitions in life and also expectations from the workshop. Is that correct? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What ambitions okay. do you have? Like what you, uh, like what you want to uh, use this uh, knowledge about networking and volunteering for uh, in your career, let's say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah.
<laughs> if you're ready, I will now open the rooms so you can join them. See you there. Podcast message the way it's already full. Oh, we have one. Uh... <laughs> no. <laughs> we are in the breakout room with you. Ah, I didn't put us anywhere. Ah, I yeah, yeah the, the ones left. Uh, yeah. uh, we can move you from room to room if you want. No. I don't know if it's uh, necessary on this one. Yeah, because you will be hearing about the people yeah. from each other. Yeah. So that but do we have to present? Uh, but we already introduced ourselves. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, so we yeah, want. No, it, it, it's it's more to get like people to talk about each other and okay. to have like a little, you, yeah. a little like uh, not like instead of each person introducing themselves and maybe the other ones spacing out, it's <laughs> having having an, an, a, a complete stranger introducing you can be a bit more spicy and interesting. Nice. I think. How long do you think I should keep them? I don't know, maybe uh, we wait. Uh, 20 or yeah. less? Yeah, 20 is good. It's a lot there, eh? but mm. okay. It's a lot, yeah. Maybe well, Because they have, they both have to mm. play yeah, sounds. It's just yeah. funny that plumbing is one of the breakout rooms. <laughs> well, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, good to have a jolly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I like it because, you know, Danny he is also involved in. Mm. Yeah. Good, good. It's good to have a jolly. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm really needing coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but you haven't been drinking any coffee at all? No, in the studio, yeah. But um, yeah, this morning I didn't, I didn't go to the studio, so I'll be here. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm being healthier, like just having tea. <laughs> no, but actually, me too. I'm slowing down with coffee. Today I had two cups, and that was it. Slowing down. <laughs> slowing down. <laughs> I mean, well, there's been times that I would have like four or five, you know. Okay. Yeah, wow. I started to drink a lot of coffee when I came to crossing borders. I didn't think it's going to happen, but then it did. And I realized that I messed up a little bit like with my sleeping and my of body course. and everything. So Catalina bought me like a bunch of black teas in different, like, uh, because I hate tea and I hate when it's like proper tea, when it tastes like yeah. tea, I prefer yeah. the sugary ones where yeah. it's just like a little bit of color and sugar. <laughs> but she brought from Spain, like super organic, healthy black teas with this, with that. And now I'm trying like on weekends, I tried to switch uh, tea for coffee. I mean, coffee for tea, mm -hmm. but it's, and it's okay. Like it's been better and better, but around 8 PM, I have such a headache and I just don't want to talk to anybody or see anyone, but I can go through the whole day. It's just that I have to be in bed like by 8.39 and I'm just like, oh. The weekend? Okay. No, but I realize that it does mess up a little bit with mm. my yeah mm. because you know it's uh it's very stressful for the body to drink a lot of coffee because it's taking your re like stocked energy stored energies mm. you know to it's not that coffee is providing you with more energies it uses your the mm. one yeah. that your body is uh saving you know yeah it's like deceiving your body into thinking that it's not tired yeah but you're still like yeah. same time i mean i like my coffee in the morning yeah. like it's it's a ritual i think creations and italians are similar in that way we maybe you drink it for like shorter amount of time or something we like to make this whole big thing yeah, just like, um. yeah you're doing espresso shots like and yeah but i mean it's similar in Croatia, like we drink macchiatos and it's basically mm -hmm. like it's very small so it's not but yeah. we do like have this morning coffee it's like very important for everybody so i like to i like to keep that but then I go to CB office and I'm just like pumping, pumping, pumping because it's the filter coffee. Yeah. yeah. And it's I feel like strong, yeah. I feel like and it's, it's just strong, strong, yeah. But it's this store, it's strong, yeah. So it's very strong. I've also when when I came to Denmark, uh, I I fell into the trap of the filter coffee <laughs> yeah. in the offices or at school. And uh, yeah, you get high, I get a bit high, then like, yeah. sometimes a bit shaky. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Going on, and then sometimes, like, also with cold, uh, it makes you really pee a lot. <laughs> uh -huh. so. It dehydrates you actually, so you have to constantly drink water and coffee. Drink, uh, yeah, and then you pee like every uh, like 15 minutes, basically. Mm -hmm. Coffee, yeah. it's yeah. the best and worst thing that 
ever yeah. exist. Yeah, yeah true. So Can't I, without I, it. I had, to force, yeah. I had to force myself not to drink coffee after four. Mm -hmm. Four is my limit, or it fucks up my my sleep rhythm. That is already a bit uh, unstable. So yeah. Yeah. No. before we the sketchy Mondays, we I, like at sketchy Mondays we start at five six, mm -hmm. and uh, the main thing is having coffee and cakes while we draw. And, uh, and that like it was terrible. Sometimes I will come home on a Monday night. Uh, completely high on sugar and coffee, wouldn't be able to sleep until four in the morning, and then my whole week will start like oh, in the worst. <laughs> but, yeah, are you gonna talk about Sketchy Monday? Yeah, yeah. Good, good. That's yeah, I, I, I have like I have an interaction talking a bit about networks. Yeah. I mean, but from my point of view, that is not like uh, anything super scientific. Yeah. Uh, and then there will be, I will be talking about my experience uh, in, in with Sketchy Monday, with the, to the, the, the cultural house, the studio that I had before where we started all yeah. these projects. So, nice. No, no, but that is perfect. That is perfect. The best, I mean, we didn't want anything formal or, uh, you know, this yeah. is like sharing stories, experiences and, you know, whatever you learn from your experience. So. It's perfect, yeah. yeah. But should we close the... I wrote them, yeah, the message that we're going to close them in 30 seconds, just so yeah. we don't, you know, just suddenly stop somebody <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Because no, it used to happen, so... Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. But it, it does tell you, like, uh, the, the room is closing in, uh, no? I think when I press close all rooms, I think it's going to automatically, like, drop out everybody. Yeah. You think mm, so? No, I don't think... Well, at least in my Danish class, no. They, it gives you, like, uh, a minute, I think. So. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not that experienced with Zoom, actually. Because yeah. I don't have, like, uh, no, like office meetings or school from mm -hmm. home. Yeah. Just, like, sitting in the studio doing my thing. <laughs> so. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're doing a lot of things in, in here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to close them now and invite everybody. Back. Yeah. Ah, in one minute. Yeah. That's okay. They can, ah, okay. can choose. They can ah. choose if to wait a minute or just join. Or they, about. they come back immediately. It means that it was awkward. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> if they wait a minute. It means that they're they still have some. They're still, still talking. Cool. Yeah. I'm really curious to see how is this is gonna go. And my computer is slowly charging. I I, <laughs> I plugged it with the tablet charger. Nice. Uh, Nice. Yeah, but it's nice that I have the tablet as a backup. So if something, if this dies, I'm just improvising. Oh, it's good. I mean, you freak me out a little bit. I like always charger. like uh, check three times before I leave the studio if I have my computer charger. <laughs> but yesterday I was destroyed. I spent too many hours working. Yeah. But looks cozy, your bedroom. Is it your bedroom? It's nice. I mean, uh, now I'm not showing like the messy part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh it's a nice room. Oh hi. Hey people are back. Hi everybody. Welcome back. I hey. hope it wasn't awkward. Hey. And, uh, let's start from uh hi. Nadia, maybe? You're the first one I see on the if you want to introduce the person you were with in the in the breakout room. Me? If you can wanna talk like yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I was uh, talking with uh, Bernam. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure if I pronounce it well. Uh, Bernam is a um, refugee and he lives in a refugee camp. Uh, he didn't mention how many days and I didn't ask or how long. He comes from Iran, so he's a Kurdist. Uh, he has a bachelor in uh, content. So he could be like what I understood, uh, like a counselor around taxes and money for some, for people in companies. Mm -hmm. And um, actually now he's uh, in Denmark and he has really big issues to implement himself in the society. Mm -hmm. And especially for uh, according to job. And he says, because it's, uh, he faces political uh, issues uh, the political issues uh, that we didn't get in more details are obstacle for him. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you very much. Do you want to add something, Bernard? About... Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, I don't remember anything because uh, I have a stress and <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Uh, but uh, I should uh, talk more, more than and uh, have a note for that. Yeah. Sorry about that again. <laughs> it, it's okay. We, we, I know I know what stress is like, but uh, Arya seems like a really cool person. So maybe you should just introduce yourself. Uh, but uh, just, I remember Arya is a neighbor to Iran <laughs> and uh, it's a work about, uh, I think it's a Arctic or no. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't remember. Um, yeah, may I help him? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. So um, I kept three words. You said ambitions, expectations, and volunteering. I have been using volunteering uh, in general, and I have been volunteering in other countries also. And um, I don't have any expectations from uh, this webinar. Mm -hmm. I just came across recently with Crossing Borders and I found it so much interesting. And um, I said, why not just start to follow the um, events of them? Um, my ambitions now is, uh, of course, I want to implement myself in the society and I've been in Denmark uh, because of love since August. And uh, it was hard for me to find ways under the pandemic and, you know, everything was closing and I was like, uh, where shall I go? Mm -hmm. And um, even though I create a network, really small, friendly network, and I'm comfortable with me, uh, my area, and I know how to say hello, or I know that Danish, they may no smile, but I don't need to lose my smile. And uh, in a way, they will smile with you back. And what is my background? Um, I have studied theater and I have been working the last nine years on that. And I'm an actress, but I have um, covering different positions in theater and TV and cinema. Mm. And I also do it at my own productions. And um, yeah, actually, I'm a, I'm a poly tool, mixed tool, you know, I can do many things, mm -hmm. but I need a team. And this is what I'm looking for, people that they could be inspired and yeah. yeah. And recently I spent a lot of time in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry again. <laughs> it's a problem. Uh, maybe the next one in my screen is uh, Pauline. Did I say it correct? Or Pauline? Almost. The French pronunciation would be Pauline. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was talking with uh, Plamen. Um, and has he introduced himself? He's from uh, Bulgaria. Uh, his ambitions in life, well, he studied social um, entrepreneurship and he's been uh, helping and leading workshops to help migrants. Um, you know, starting uh, their new life when they move to uh, Denmark. He would like to continue doing this. He has a couple of ideas of projects uh, in mind and he will see how we can uh, implement them. And his expectation for the workshop, uh, he would like to learn more about digital communication and digital networking mm. um, and also learn from all of us participants. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, sounds about right. Um, a few words about Paulina. So where do I start from? She, uh, she was born in Paris. She grew up in the Mediterranean uh, city of uh, Marseille. And uh, then recently she's moved to, to Denmark in the last, uh, well, in the recent time. And uh, after her graduation, she's, she's been looking for ways to implement her, you know, her passions for cooking and dancing with her ideas about 
helping refugees with you know her, her passion about or like her beliefs about uh making the world a better place and giving equal opportunities to people so she's still looking into ways to developing that through you know like being engaged at the crossing borders and gaining some experience through doing and looking for ways to eventually start up her own uh, um yeah project with people and about the, the expectations she's uh I mean, at least what I understood from it is that she's uh, she's been uh, looking for ways to also like digitally connect with people and expect expand her network, as well as see you know what the trends are in uh, conversations uh, in the digital space when it comes to refugees and uh, such spaces. And um, I think that's about it. Wow, nice, thanks. thanks. And. Uh... Lucia, Lucia? Yeah, it's Lucia. Uh, um, I spoke with um, Dulnia. Um, she's from Iraq and Iran. Um, kind, uh, if I if I understood it correctly, but since since May 2000, uh, 2020, she's uh, in Denmark in a zone camp, and there she has to um, face many obstacles but from my point of view and from from her talk she really um, seems optimistic about life about the change that it might bring to her so that's that's i find really cool and very really nice um the most expe expectation about this um workshop for her is that um from various political and other reasons she couldn't really work in um, her home country and therefore she um, wants to work now and obtain as many um, experiences and other people opinion um, and actually to learn what is really very sympathetic um, and also what I find kind of cool is that we have kind of um, same interest in politics so yeah it was very nice talk nice Thank you. Mm, thank you, Lucia. I have the same feeling about that too. <laughs> well, uh, just one thing to say, and not Iran, Iraq. I am from Iran, raised in Iraq, but yeah. Well, uh, Lucia, she's from Slovakia and uh, Slovenia, Slovakia, Slovakia, right? Just give me a sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, she she she's still in there, and she will be in Denmark in April. And uh, she's looking forward to study her master's degree in politics and philosophy, which I find really interesting because, as I said, I have been raised in that situation, so it's a part of my life too. Uh, and it's nice to know that too about her. And uh, yeah, she's looking forward to know more, to learn more from Crossing Borders in these uh, webinars. And she's looking for knowledge, which I hope she can get through here. And yes, that's it. Okay, nice, thank you. That was everybody. Right, uh, okay. Uh, I feel like uh, the stakes are high with all these expectations. Maybe there was a tricky question to ask. <laughs> Get for what you're wishing for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna um, run the presentation. Let's see. Um, share the screen. Start broadcast. I'm, I'm, I was just telling uh, Silvia and Masha that I'm not so used to use Zoom. Uh, Weirdly enough, and these times. Okay. Ah, here. So, like, yeah, let's start up talking about networks because for me, it's been uh, really important to understand this thing. I, it happened kind of in a natural way when I came to Denmark to, to become part of a network and understand how networks work and i'm not talking about computer networks but i'm talking about networks of people so like does any of you would like to say what is a network for them do you have a nice example or something that you would like to mention i i can mm -hmm. yeah well yeah. for me when i think about network i think about the community yeah. And uh, for instance, like uh, my community, I found my community through crossing borders. So, yeah. Yeah. That's that's my 
I'm gonna say that's my people, that's my community. <laughs> yeah, because when I moved to Copenhagen, like, um, yeah, of course I didn't know anyone. I moved here with my with my partner, but yeah, uh, everything was new. And then uh, uh, I had to find a job and I did find it, but it was like in the hospitality just to make ends meet. And then uh, I, I kind of missed like this, uh, environment so I joined crossing borders as a volunteer and there I found like people that, that were aligned with my values with uh, that we would share interests and visions so that was my my network yeah that's a great example mm. uh, may I add something from my point of view yeah okay uh, well uh, same as uh, they said it's uh, certainly from where you are and the communication and the people around you and from which place or which person you're connected to others and exactly this is what's happening to me as a as an experience as a personal experience because I am in a country which I don't know anyone but through one place now I am knowing many more and mm. uh, this will help me in future to give me as a point of view or maybe from someone you will connect it to something or someone else which may help you in any way uh, and one more thing in my point of view which is very important usually in daily life while we are thinking about having one person or, uh, or an, organ on an organization in our left we are all always thinking about the quality of that person or that organization because you know through that you will also uh, be introduced to better chances or better people as well so it's very important to have that connection and you feel where you exactly you are and which towards which thing you're going so it helps that in my point of view yeah that's really good Dunya. thanks i have a really good example of um this branching that you draw i don't know if you draw this but uh, it looks very nice yeah. uh, so when i when i came here of course my first network was also crossing borders and I have a roommate. And um, for example, one uh, nice thing that happened during some time was that I wanted to uh, volunteer somewhere. And then Sylvia introduced me to you people that um, have a volunteering organization in Folketskusen. So I told that to my roommate, she started to go there, but then there she met somebody who actually connected her to the um bar that is underneath that is like in the in the Falken Husset and then she started to actually volunteer there and there she met some people that she is now still friends with so it just came like through from Sylvia through me to my roommate to her having another network so yeah. it was really pretty nice to be like part of the chain that just connected random people yeah. that didn't know was like branches in a way yeah. <laughs> I feel like a <laughs> the the cool thing is then like uh, somebody maybe from Sylvia's network might reach somebody in your uh, roommate's ne new network because of like of a chain of need you know maybe a friend of Sylvia needs something and the world uh, reaches one of your uh, roommate's friends and mm -hmm. uh, like thanks to you like uh, like elements in between of the chain and uh, and then you can like maybe get help uh, for something so yeah that's exactly what i wanted to go uh, where where i wanted to go and yeah why i made this little drawing um to show like i i don't know if you see that there are people and not keyholes but uh, yeah and uh, i just uh, stole a quote from wikipedia that says in other words a personal net group of caring dedicated people who are committed to maintain a relationship with a person in order to support a given set of activities. Having a strong personal network requires being connected to a network of resources for mutual development and growth. That's like, this is just writing down what you guys uh, said and what has also been my experience and I'm soon getting there. I, when I like think of my network or I actually think that Sylvia used a really nice word that is community uh, because network is kind of a cold business and uh, I don't know, like a capitalistic uh, oriented uh, kind of word. I like the word community, uh, uh, but from network, I like what I can imagine like this net, like this branch just spreading out and people uh, connected even though they don't know about it. Um, from my close community, I like to, uh, in my close community, I definitely like to have my best friends, my close friends, 
uh, family members and uh, other people with common interests. And that's really, really important in my opinion. So if your interest is uh, cooking or dancing, then uh, like besides your close circle of friends and family members, you, you might want to surround yourself with people that dance and cook because then you will have more chances to hear about opportunities for projects or, or workshops where you can learn new skills. And, and then the last one I put here in this list is people with useful uh, tools, skills, and contacts. Uh, that's like a bit more abstract, but um, we can all, like we always need, like we live in a city, we, it's really expensive to live here, and we need to have uh, people helping us out with, uh, with their skills or with things that we don't have. So we kind of like uh, all try to out like to reach for these people. And then little note that I wrote that it's like that it's not good to ex exploit your friends or exploit people that you ask for help from. Because uh, in, like, uh, in my experience, it's never nice to be exploited. So, or like being taken advantage of. And then you definitely don't wanna help that person the next time. So uh, I, I see it kind of as a karma thing. Uh, like uh, I, you helped me today and I will definitely help you tomorrow uh, if you need uh, or the other way around. So also the yeah. Just ask something about the, the previous note because I think it, it's quite interesting how you wrote it and uh, it makes it a, a lot of common sense, right? Um, do you have a word about giving? Like, you know, do you have something to, you know, more to say about giving? Because also the act of giving, it's also like, you know, like it help us grow. You know, it's not just the recipient who gets, uh, you know, like, you know, the benefit of what we give, but also in the act of us giving it, like it makes us enlarge. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, um, yeah, it's actually good that you enhance that word because I also believe that for like, uh, maybe it's a, a naive way of seeing uh, the world or maybe a very hippie way of seeing things. But uh, I believe that like uh, when we give, uh, like there's more like, there are likely more chances for things to, for good things to happen to us. And I'm not talking from a religious point of view or anything. It's just like, a, I don't know, like how I put myself towards life. Uh, and of course, like it's important to give, but not uh, drain yourself out, not give too much. Uh, it's important to remember uh, about yourself and take care of yourself in all that. I'd like to move on and talk a bit about, bit more about me, if you guys are interested in that. I am uh, a street artist and and not only a street artist. I work uh, with illustration. I work with graphic design. I recently started working on making a video game uh, with a friend. And I, I just like love to do whatever that is visual, uh, where I can use a pen and a paper or a tablet and, and, and a design software to draw with. But as, like most of all, I like to paint on big walls uh, unfortunately, it, I'm not in the best country for that because it's not really easy to get uh, walls to paint, but um, it still can happen and still a lot of fun. And I started my path uh, from volunteering in, uh, in a cultural house called Kraftwerken. And um, yeah, Kraftwerken is the house that you see in the middle. Uh, in the picture in the middle, in the top, this uh, funny shape. Uh, sorry for like the low quality of the pictures. I went like uh, diving on Facebook and on my uh, hard drives to find some stuff. But uh, yeah, like it's just pictures of me and the things I've been helping out with uh, crazy projects from crazy people, like building a dragon on the picture on the left uh, bottom. And, um, and all this happened uh, for, to me, thanks to this house called Kraftwerke. As uh, Masha was saying with her friend going to Volketshus, Kraftwerke was my uh, community. When I came to Denmark, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. 
I met a, a guy that then became one of my best friends randomly. And he was like, oh, but do you like to make art? Check out this place in Belby because maybe, maybe they have something for you. And he actually meant another place. I ended up in this house by mistake, but I saw that there was a lot of potential and a lot of people organizing stuff. And it was a space for uh, young people to try out uh, organizing events also on a pretty big scale. Like there's um, uh, two brothers that have been organizing uh, punk cons concerts and festivals for ages now. And, um, and also on a small scale. And I was really fascinated by this because something like this didn't exist uh, in Italy and in my hometown. Uh, so I started joining them at the house meetings that they had, I think every second Tuesday on the uh, top uh, left picture. That was like the small room where we had the house meetings. I don't know why, I don't remember why we had, we were on candle lights that day, it was very close. And I, I, I like was suggesting entering in the house, like being part of the house and offering some, some uh, uh, design uh, for uh, having a, like in exchange to have a small studio space. Uh, either like designing logos or graphics or, or making like uh, signs and painting walls for them. And that was what I was offering. Um, thanks to one of the people that used to work there. Uh, let's see, this guy here with dreadlocks. Uh, his name is Peter. He used to work in the cultural house. And at some point by casually, he ended up having getting a warehouse for free uh, where, he, where he could do whatever he wanted. And me and him, we were pretty good friends back then. And uh, we just started running this warehouse and, and like making art there and painting and organizing events. And he, and like he came up one day with the idea, hey, let's do a sketch circle like they do in Berlin. And so we started with this event that one of the first times we were three people me, this girl, and, uh, and the other guy. <laughs> and uh, later on, it became much more successful. Uh, there would be other pictures, maybe. And this event called Sketch Circle was like the first uh, event that I was uh, organizing. Like, uh, I was in charge of a lot of things for that. And it was happening every single Monday. Uh, and like from two people, it started being five, then 10, then 20. And, uh, and we kept doing it and it was great. And we even organized some exhibitions together. And I got to meet a lot of artists there and other people that really inspired me and, uh, and helped me grow because I learned from them as well. This is uh, some pictures of, from the sketch circle. And this was like a really, really crazy place. Uh, uh, we could paint on the walls. It was pretty, pretty big. The warehouse it was quite dirty, but uh, it, it was just perfect for us back then. And uh, some of these are like uh, friends of mine still now. And I met all of them pretty much there. Um, and I learned a lot from all these artists that came there. Now the, the event is called Sketchy Monday and uh, we do it in a different cultural, like in another place is a cultural house in Belby, a craft packet, the one I showed you earlier. And, um, and it, we had to, to leave the, the previous space, the, it was called the Friend Zone Collective. Uh, we had to leave it because we got evicted at some point. Anyways, our contract was temporary. And, uh, and then I decided to go back to the origins and I proposed Kraftwerk to, uh, to host a sketchy sketch circle there. Then with the, with the guy I was organizing it with in the beginning, we decided to change the name because he wasn't gonna be part of it anymore. And uh, it also went pretty well. I remember like this was one of the last dates before Corona and we were doing it in another venue uh, called Basement in Vestibul. And this, it was just a lot of people and it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a great place for, for sharing ideas, sharing uh, skills and 
talking about exhibitions about art and movies and so on so uh it was it's like a a great canvas in a way to to start from and um and of course now with uh, corona we like we had to stop but uh we we will be back uh doing sketchy monday as soon as things go back to normal and the way like it grew i it it also helped like having volunteers like like i i became from just like one of the volunteers that's going to buy coffee and and cookies and so on i became the main organizer and then new people joined in and they started helping out as well so i could kind of delegate if i was going back home for a month i could uh, delegate the responsibility of uh, taking care of the of the events every week so like it it really grew back then and uh so this is like last i mean the picture is not from last summer the picture is from <laughs> two weeks ago but in the summer we we painted these two murals uh by kraftwerker and it's just like this picture really makes me think of my development uh, as an artist since I since I started in 2016 in Copenhagen. The 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 mural on the right it's from two artists, a Danish one and a Spanish one, and they they are both artists that when I came to Denmark I really looked up to. I was uh, like I didn't know them personally. People were telling me about how cool they were, and I was following them on social media. And then eventually, like thanks to this, um, to this uh, like ever growing network, I got to meet them. We became friends. We painted together, and we ended up painting side by side these two walls. And and it even felt normal there. Uh, while uh, three years ago, I would have been panicking just at the idea of uh, painting with somebody that I would look so much up to. So it's just like, yeah, like what happened with four years of effort. I, yeah, I might say that maybe if I hadn't spent time volunteering, but I had spent time focusing on myself, maybe I would have uh, had better skills right now, but I wouldn't have had this network that allowed me to uh, paint bigger walls in the city or every once in a while get uh, illustration and painting jobs. So yeah, um, I put down on the list like a small drawing game. Uh, if you guys feel like it, uh, I don't know if you have any questions to this point. Um, just let me know. <laughs> I have more to talk about. So if you want to do the drawing game, we can do the drawing game. But if you if you prefer to hear me talk more about volunteering, uh, I can go on. Uh, and also if you have any questions uh, before I continue, please let me know. What was the, 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 the role of, um, of your network that you created for these few years in the difficult moments? I mean, all of us go through difficult moments. Yeah. Right? Yeah. How would you see that? Well, maybe, I mean, like uh, most of the people that uh, came to this event, they were, weren't just uh, people dropping by. Uh, they became friends and some of them like really good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And um, even like people that didn't come to the event, but that they were inspiring me to, to create more. Uh, I think like what what I got like besides having really great friends that will support me and will really believe in my art like uh, a lot of the people here really appreciate my work and uh, buy my drawings and and that's like like a really important push for me to keep working is also that some of these people really inspired me in 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 like uh, in I don't know, as kind of like a professional, uh, in a professional way, like some of these people are really committed uh, entrepreneurs or artists themselves. Uh, so it's, it, it, it was always good to have like these examples of people close to me. Yeah. Yeah. Good case example practice. 
Ja. Hm. Was? Hm. So do you guys want feel like a drawing a, a little bit or? I think it's a good idea. I mean, if the artist offers, who are we to say no? My my idea was to uh, that we all like grab a pen and paper and we yeah. draw a person that we see in the screen. Anybody. And when when somebody has the drawing uh, complete, maybe you can raise your hand and uh, then show the drawing. And the other ones have to guess who who you've been drawing. Is that cool? Everyone's gonna draw you. Well, uh, you can draw me. You can, but yeah. I mean, don't take the same uh, subject twice. Me. <laughs> oh, and I see that Masha left. <laughs> oh, you guys are ready, huh? There. Okay, okay, okay. Who should I draw? Maybe I, I close the sh this share screen for now so you can see each other better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Aria, what did where did you go? Um. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's uh draw for 10 minutes max. Do you feel like it's a, it's a good time? Five. Let's do it for five minutes. At the at, at the three, we we stop and we and we see the drawings and we try to guess. Mm. Sorry, I have uh, something. Yeah? <laughs> I yeah. don't have anything here for drawing. Uh, uh, Nothing um, like can you draw on your <laughs> in my hands? <laughs> it's okay if you don't have anything for drawing, it's fine. Uh, yeah, sorry about that because uh, I'm be out and you can, can still try to guess uh, what other people are drawing. Okay, yeah, so, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no problem. Or maybe if he has a piece of materials, he can create with materials. That's He's a good. Cool. Uh, that's a good, uh, yeah. Or you can, uh, I don't know, adjust yourself to look like another person. <laughs> <laughs> the art is going around, you see? It is affecting everyone. <laughs> wow, actually, this is not too bad. <laughs> oh, I'm very curious. Now. I'm using impressionism. I don't <laughs> use any kind of. <laughs> it always works. I am more on cubism, impressionism, and something very unrealistic. So I, yeah. Remember it would that. Be too easy if I draw with my real abilities. <laughs> but I don't have that any any shape, way, or form. I want to see a hyperrealistic uh, portrait from Masha uh, in five minutes. Wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you waited for five years, you would not get anything <laughs> remotely looking like. I, yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, like I, I tried hyperrealism when I was uh, studying a bit uh, illustration and it looks really cool, but it wasn't uh, for me. It will have taken me also five years to finish a painting. <laughs> but yeah make it the uh, way you you want it i can be also a stick figure but uh, with an element that points out at some at some person in the room example And if you are like very, very fast at drawing, you can draw more people, huh? <laughs> oh, this is one thing. <laughs>
Okay, three minutes. I'm really curious to see what's happening. What do you guys, what are you guys drawing? Are you also drawing, Mattia? I hope so. Yeah, yeah, I'm drawing, of course. Ah, okay, okay. Wouldn't be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. If you guys want to make it easy for yourself, Dunia is uh, very standing very still. Uh, <laughs> Believe it or not, I was thinking about the same point. <laughs> Do you have a, a way to show us the, your drawing? Uh, that's the problem, actually. I was thinking. Even, you in cannot even see it, do. Right? Oh. Uh, maybe, I don't know. It's OK. You should be able to take a photo and send it. Guys, one minute. Oh, wow. Yeah. One minute. I'm drawing Lucia. I have a, no. Oh, <laughs> I said it. Yes. I said that I wanted to say something. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will guess when you see her drawing, you will guess immediately. <laughs> but I just wanted to put out disclaimer about myself once I played Pictionary and my partner started to cry because we couldn't move because of my drawing uh, skills. We cannot call them skills. Yeah, he started to cry because we couldn't move from the start and we didn't win any points because I was drawing so bad. <laughs> so that's the only thing I'm going to say before I show my drawing. <laughs> this day. OK, I think time is up. Who wants to show the first one? I think Sylvia can go first because we all know who she drew. So maybe we can check yeah. if, it's, if it resonates with the real person. Yeah. Well, also disclaimer like I always thought still think that I'm very bad at drawing but I'm I'm challenging myself I actually participated in a sketchy Monday that Mattia was organizing <laughs> and I just panicked for half an hour like looking at the other what they were drawing you know <laughs> trying to copy some ideas <laughs> but uh, yeah I mean till a few years ago I thought that I could only draw donkeys and <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's yeah, I try to draw the beautiful Lucia, but I don't know if you see it. I I don't really see it so much. I see uh, because I draw it with yellow. The orange. Wait. Oh, but you're cheating, uh, Sylvia. <laughs> what? It's uh, you use like a very light pencil. Okay, I see it now. I, I see can't it. see it still because it's like a sharpie, you know. Can you uh, see it? Wait, wait, I'm gonna turn because it's very bright here. Yeah. Turn down the sun. Yeah, I was inspired by by the flowers, mm -hmm. but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, the flowers. Nice, nice. Are... <laughs> Thank you, Lucia. <laughs> okay, who's the next one? Plamen. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can go for it. I can definitely go for it. Let me see where's the. Oh yeah. Uh... Ooh, who's that? Can you guess? Yeah. Then um. Then now. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that's. Beautiful. You can the you can the microphone on this one. Thank you. <laughs> I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been seeing my tears. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. I mean, again, like, you know, I'm uh, by no means a professional or very skilled at drawing, but, uh, you know, that's as much as I could get from my, my pen. 
But uh, you, you've been close to me enough times, uh, Clement. To... Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm kind of like, you know, cheating here because I've seen uh, Matthias so many, so many sessions, so many of uh, his volunteer sessions with uh, Sketchy Monday that I, I think I've kind of like picked up some on it. Yeah, you, you definitely have. So. Okay, someone... Uh... May, may I? Yes, please. I, I did three. So, oh. because... Yeah. Wow. Oh, I, I think I know who it is, but yeah. uh, <laughs> looks very cool. Yeah. 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 I like the hair. Yeah. Who is he? Is Benham? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I think uh, uh, thank you. Commission all this for his job as a model for uh, yeah. and then I did this. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that me? Yeah. 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 Masha. <laughs> Masha. <laughs> and in the last minute, I did this. Ah, Dina. Ah, yeah. wow. Yeah. I like this one. <laughs> wow. oh, is that me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> No offense. This one. No, 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 actually, it's good. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Luc Lucia, do you want to show? Sure, I have two. <laughs> um, first one, this one. Plamen? Mm -hmm. uh -uh. yeah. I would say uh, Pauline. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> and the second one is similar. Wow. Okay. According to the to, to the, the photo. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, that's yeah. super good. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my tip. On that note, I will then go next one. <laughs> but it's also very, very important. Impression is <laughs> <laughs> it's from the same picture, huh? It's from also from me from the yeah. yeah, from the picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I think it's very cool actually. Mm -hmm. They all are very cool, like but mine, <laughs> uh, it also is very cool. Don't be harsh, the missing Pauline. Yeah, um, I went for the easy way. I draw Dinia. I don't know if you can see. Ooh, oh, yeah, wow. so, uh, oh, this is so cool. Dark yeah, hair. this is nice. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Wow. You're welcome. Wow. I, see, I, I did wow. too, but the second was uh, fast. I don't know if you can see. Can you see? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or Polina? Polina. It's Benna. <laughs> yeah, it's Benham for sure. That's he's a very popular today. The most popular guy. But I started drawing Benham and then he, he disappeared from the camera. <laughs> so he was without Thank you eyes. Guys. <laughs> Did nice. you guess the other one? Pauline? I yeah, think Pauline. It's, it's Russia in my opinion. That's the flowers. Yeah, oh, okay. Is this the hair or the scarf? Is the hair, but yeah, it looks, ah, a, bit like a, it looks, looks like a bit like a scarf. Yeah. Yeah. I need to, to work Thank on you, my five-minute drawings here. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I would say um, yours is not even the best one out of all of us, and you are the artist, so. <laughs> what, 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 which one would you vote as the best one here? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I would say Pauline's was the most professional one yeah yeah but oh, each right. one of them had their own <laughs> personality and beauty so yeah, definitely. i don't yeah. think i can choose they're all different categories yeah. i really liked benam from plamen actually <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i think benam should decide who did the best benam <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a race yeah. of its own but different different styles it's, it's hard to yeah. say uh it's hard to say about you know what what what's best, and maybe it says something also about Matthias' uh, professional 
area about art, how it kind of, you know, it is very flexible, isn't it? In yeah, it is. You can be doing so many uh, different things, guys. Um, sometimes it's, uh, it's scary how, like, many possibilities you have when you, when you uh, make art. Uh, when I got a commission, it gets a bit scary. Uh, it's like in the beginning because you're like, okay, so I have a completely white canvas and uh, I have to fill it up with something that uh, that is has to be beautiful. And especially when it's a, a piece of street art that a lot of people will see, is like uh, there are so many things to take into consideration actually, mm -hmm. yeah. Do you want to see more of my slides, guys? I have. Yes. Yes. Have a little more. Even though it would be nice to just like keep drawing, right? <laughs> I'm sharing the screen again here. So yeah, I I would like to talk a bit about volunteering. I don't know how many of you have experience with that here. I think Aria said she has. And Plamen, definitely, I know he has some experience with volunteering. Mm -hmm. So um, volunteering is like, a, it can be a, a great way to, to enter a community on to, or to start your network. Like for me, it went like that. I arrived at Kraftwerk and I started volunteering there. And then I started volunteering with the Sketch Circle events. And like basically the network came to me <laughs> and, uh, and it was a lot of work. Uh, sometimes it was a bit intense or stressful, um, but it was always worth it um, because I really learned a lot there. And as I was saying before, met people that I could other learn from and learning is sometimes also learning what not to do. I also met people that I was like, oh my God, I really, if I have a project, I don't want to do it like this guy, for example. Um, but also learning skills and learning, um, learning things that other people might have spent years figuring out and they, they share them with you uh, because maybe you're helping them out with a project. So that's what can be useful about volunteering or what has been really useful in my experience. And of course, like making friends and having fun. Things have really to be about having fun, in my opinion. If you are, if you are volunteering and you're not having fun, uh, then there is something wrong. Uh, so in this uh, slide, I was, I wanted to point out that the difference between volunteering and working for free. So you are working for free if the people you are helping, they are making money, they are making revenue and you are like just working for free for them. And it might be presented in a really cool way, uh, but if you're really not getting anything out of it, if you're not getting experience, if you're not getting network, if you're not getting exposure, like real exposure, then uh, it, you, you might have to consider what you're doing there. Uh, because there are people that try to take advantage of you. And uh, yeah, as I wrote here, and it's very important also when uh, your work is not credited. Uh, I've had like bad experiences uh, where I was doing a lot of work and uh, like a lot of work and the newspaper comes and uh, interviews everybody but it doesn't interview me because I'm not the one and the one that doesn't speak Danish. And, uh, and I was like, like uh, one of the main organizers of an event and uh, that felt really shit. Like the article comes out, the other people you worked with and you did a lot for, they are like, they don't even mention you and you've been working months on that and that sucks. So those are all red flags when these things happen uh, and it can happen even with friends, uh, but when these things happen, you need to, to, to put some boundaries and uh, decide uh, to just like step back and take care of yourself. Kind of uh, evaluating how much work energy you're putting into that project, whatever it is, and then how much you're getting from it, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. 
you need to yeah. do an evaluation because uh, volunteering is super cool and it's uh, it can be a really nice uh, platform or resource but if you are uh, like if you are like doing uh, work that is not appreciated or is not credited or like all of the other things that i mentioned then then you're being exploited basically and i've seen it happen many times yeah mm -hmm. so it's uh, and sometimes like we don't even see it when we are there we are so eager to do something so willing to help so willing to take responsibility for a project of others that we don't see that we are doing all the work for them and that's not fair as long as you don't get your fair share that's that's not um that's not a good deal yeah yeah what would, would you um i would like to take you a step back and ask about like well how do we get to this stage where we actually volunteer what kind of opportunities there are out for volunteering is it associations that we can look at is yeah. it you know governmental websites that provide this kind of you know links to places is it cultural houses that we need to get in touch and you know like try to figure out what's happening well my experience directly is with cultural houses there are uh, there are also websites for volunteers and facebook is a big resource there are like a, a free in, in Danish is called freewilly. Um, that is like the trans translation from volunteer. There are like uh, uh, groups for that. And like there, there is um, a whole uh, network of cultural houses that Kraftwerk get is part. And they, for example, they have their bars always run by volunteers. So that's also a way to get into in, in touch with these uh, places. Then with other environments, I if you guys actually have some experience, please share. If you have experience with uh, cooking, for example, Blum, and how did you get in touch with uh, Folke Kocken? Mm -hmm. Or if others have other experiences, it would be nice to share because I'm, I, I can only give you my own advice. And mine was to go to a cultural house mm -hmm. and just uh, talk with who is there and see what was the vibe. Mm -hmm. But places that uh, that were like people, uh, were the places that value culture, uh, like uh, uh, like venues, places where people play music, and uh, where they make art. So places like Bolche Fabrik and also Christiania probably have uh, have uh, good uh, places for volunteering, like uh, uh, Opera, the the cafe. It was basically like entirely run by volunteers and they had an amazing list of musicians every week. Like uh, it was the place uh, to go if you didn't have much money and you wanted to hear good music most of the times. Yeah. And, um, and like Copenhagen, Denmark like has a lot of the culture of volunteering, for example. Uh, I don't know if it's like started with Roskilde Festival uh, or if it's like just a thing that the Danes like. Yeah. I think it's something to be noted about culture in general, like, you know, how things are being done in, uh, in Denmark and volunteering is a big part of Danish yeah. culture Yeah. in many different spheres. And you do have many different culture houses, uh, you know, around town, also outside of Copenhagen, obviously, like in, in different parts of the country where they, they do encourage young people, also like, you know, people with ideas to come in and uh, start their own projects in a beneficial way. Mm -hmm. so that that is something to always be kept that there's always some kind of opportunity out there like as long as you have the, the idea of the, what you want to do you can always reach out there's always going to be somebody you can reach out to exactly and uh, on facebook there are some groups for uh, foreigners uh there's like a uh, expats in copenhagen that is maybe one of the most popular mm -hmm. you you ask a question there and you will have people like giving you a lot of advice and answers. So that's also a good place to start, just like these expats groups and uh, ask there, hey, I would like to find a community around uh, Slackline or for dancing or for acrobatics, and you will definitely get a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, um, advice. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. So, I, I would like also to mention mentoring. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what it is. It's basically when you have uh, a person 
like in my case, it could be an artist, established artist with uh, that sells canvases or that works an, as an illustrator and paints murals. Um, that like kind of follows you in your process. So a person that you are hopefully friend with that you can ask for advice. And uh, I had I have a mentor. Like there is a I started like. Uh, one of my favorite artists here, we became friends. And when I was in, uh, in uh, uh, multimedia design and communication school, I asked him if he wanted to be my mentor. And so like when I have a doubt about uh, a sketch, a, de a design an illustration, whatever, I ask him for, uh, for advice. And uh, it's really, really useful because his, his feedback is always super sharp, very critical, but very spot on. So it doesn't make me waste time by saying, oh, this is really good, or it's, it's good enough, don't uh, stress too much about it, but he always goes with his critique right to the point. So a mentor can be really use, useful, and, but it's, it, it's important to make sure that it's a person um, that knows what, what they're talking about. Uh, so better if it's a professional. And that might be tricky to find. I'm just like putting it there as a jolly. If you manage to find a person to help you out with these kind of things, you save uh, months of uh, struggle in figuring out also some bureaucratic stuff. You know, how for me, how to apply for fundings for an art project or how to contact an institution to paint a mural in a public space. Yes. And, uh, we do have uh, we do have uh, different people in, in this conversation right now. And uh, as far as I remember, Benham wants to start or wants to test the idea with a food truck, and then Dina mm -hmm. wants to she's right now engaged in this coding um, academy, right? So like looking at coding and you know cooking, like what kind of you know do you see do you see the role of mentorship to the same extent as in, in, in arts? Do you think, you know, they can still reach out to, you know, people who have already done things with food trucks or like coding and they can get the same benefits from uh, such a relation? I'm pretty sure that that uh, is also the case. Um, it, you don't have to see it as like, oh, I have to go out there and find a person that is going to guide me. It's more like um, it's going to eventually be part of your network. As I was saying in the beginning, um, uh, it's important to surround yourself uh, with people that uh, are that have the same share the same interests. So if you want to open a food truck, it might make sense to hang out uh, at places where there are food trucks, like for example Refen, and uh, ask ask others how they did it. Now maybe with a food truck, it's it's strange to think of a mentorship, but it's definitely important to ask uh, others that have a food truck, how they are doing it, uh, what were the biggest struggles, because it's very easy to dream in the beginning, but uh, it's also important to keep in, to have a reality check sometimes and know what can be difficult. Yeah, because also you can be seen as a competitor, like if you're reaching out to, you know, yeah. you know coming up with the same idea of somebody, right? So it's, it's, um, it's, it's a good question of how to approach people. Yeah. Yeah, in kitchen, it's very the competitivity is always really high. Um, in in my field of art, apart like in Denmark, even I, I even asked my mentor if he was okay with uh, with this, and he was like, I don't really feel like uh, it's uh, there is a um, you're gonna steal my job or anything like that. So, yeah. but yeah, it might be worth it to ask. Yeah. Right. Um, can I ask something? Yes, please. Yeah, well, when everything is free and people, they are allowed to go out and cheer up and drink a beer, this is easier. But yeah. do we have to add anything, which everything that we are sharing now, of course, uh, they are helpful and you cannot have it if we didn't have this meeting. We couldn't collect this information, so not even meeting new people. But... Do we have any suggestion under these circumstances? That's a good question. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, like the, the, 
the suggestion I could have is to keep doing what you're doing uh, by following these kind of uh, webinars because yeah. it's the kind of uh, it's the kind of gathering that we get to do now. Um, or like uh, there's always on social media uh, groups of people interested in uh, in specific uh, subjects. I haven't had great experiences uh, with those. Honestly, it's better when a community have a play, a physical place to meet. Mm. Unfortunately, yes. So I, I would take. I am actually taking this time now as a time to work on my skills and to get better at what I do, rather than a, a time where I am looking for new people to work with or new people for my network. Also, because I'm a kind of person that I, I work better in person, like in real life. Um, if I send uh, 100 emails to, to get a job, I, I don't get anything. If I go to a place with a CV in my hand, they don't even, even read the CV and maybe they give me the job. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> but I take this time now as a time to develop uh, personally, but I understand that for a person like you that has just come to Denmark, it might be, very heavy and difficult to do it to to, to uh, not know people and and also much. even in the personal development it's uh, difficult because it um, it asks for a discipline that yeah. sometimes if you know people or if you know things that they are running out uh, running up yeah. then it's much more easier and uh, especially my field that has to do with interaction oh yeah yeah it's, uh, also because when you're presenting yourself online, be it LinkedIn or whatever professional profile we decide to platform, we decide to go with, it's very static. So for some professions, it really takes away the life out of uh, that presentation. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it, you know, for some, some areas, it still works with LinkedIn. Like, you know, for instance, if you have a portfolio and you know how to present it, and nowadays we can use more videos, like, you know, maybe within the theater big background, you can use more like, you know, video, more kind of like you can make it a bit more dynamic. It's still possible to reach out to people within this field and look for mentors, for instance, mm -hmm. within that, that, that field. It still makes sense. I do know a lot of people who are doing that in coding mm -hmm. and it also works in, in, in business development and other, other professional areas. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's also a question, it's a bit of a question of, you know, doing the best you can with what you have, right? So kind of like maybe sometimes it asks for a little bit adjustments and, you know, like playing with what we have, the tools we have nowadays. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely you know, still worth, you know, to see how much you can get with uh, reaching out to, to people online. Yeah. That's really good. Diana. Also, it makes me think of uh, my girlfriend who's a performative artist as well. As well. Like uh, con she works with contemporary dance and uh, she's like using this time now to often make videos uh, like of herself singing or dancing and publishes them on, uh, on YouTube and then on Facebook on different groups. And always she writes, uh, she calls out to people for or if anybody is interested in collaborating uh, in art. So that's also a possibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might like uh, be lucky and find someone right away, or maybe the moment you are filming your video somewhere outside, uh, somebody stops and is curious, and then it comes out that uh, there's a possibility for a collaboration there. But it's definitely important to like uh, keep doing something. So going back to, to talking about discipline, uh, that that is something that uh, it's 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 hard to find within yourself. I have been I and sometimes I am a serial procrastinator myself. Uh, we all are, and it's very important not to beat yourself about it. Like not to uh, like. Uh, feel guilty for procrastinating and feeling lazy sometimes. Um, but when you feel like inspired, then like try to use that time in a, in a constructive way. And maybe 
try also to research on on techniques or tricks to be more productive and more focused now maybe do le like less but more uh, with more consistency so half an hour every day for example it's always a good start yeah so can I just say, so the last uh, link that we put in the chat, uh, most of them are for uh, the things that uh, Mattia was talking about. Last one is for Event B Write, and um, they are um, actually a site that is, um, I think they're selling tickets like usually for events, but now they turned completely to online events and webinars, mm -hmm. courses and trainings and things like that. So you can also check it and there's a bunch of free uh, online courses that you can also check out. And they are very, um, they're covering, I think, uh, most of the Europe. So depending, but the location doesn't even matter anymore. It's everything online. So you can check it also. Yeah. And also like one, one more thing, like maybe this is not like so relevant. Uh, but, um, regarding men, like um, entrepreneurship, but uh, right now, like the restriction, are, like they loosen up a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. when it's uh, like when it's uh, outside outdoor so now you there is the chance to do things outdoor um yeah maybe it's yeah we need to research it a little bit more but uh spring is behind the corner hopefully yeah. <laughs> so this is what i keep telling myself because um me too i'm not one of those people that are really disciplined and I'm trying to accept that and make space for that uh, part of myself that sometimes just cannot follow like a routine or like a certain discipline. But this is how I work. So as uh, Mattia was telling before, I when I feel more productive and more energetic, I kind of jump into that wave. And then there are days that I just need to, you know, take it more easy and uh, yeah, switch off. So it's yeah about finding like that balance that works for us. And yeah, and always like keep in mind that we're going through like a very, very intense and hard times. And uh, um, yeah, it's, it's very challenging. So yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's good to bear that in mind, I think. Yeah. Mm, the spring is definitely gonna bring some opportunities to, to stop yes. outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last year with lockdown, we started Sketchy Monday for the first, like first month, I think we were doing it in Felle Park. There was so many people gathering, doing all sorts of activities. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, Mattia, I have one question, which is uh, you think of as volunteering as the only way for having a good network or it's like an effective way of having a good network? It's, it's a tool. It's not the only way. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I think a, a, a mandatory quality is to be a nice person like towards the others uh, because because I've also met people that are like uh, they, they, they have I don't know if you call it bipolar uh, something but uh, you meet them one time and they are like uh, really funny really nice and they organize events and they're super cool then you work with them and you 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 want to kill them they treat you really bad and then they do one event and uh, and uh, time after nobody wants to work with them. So I think being a, a nice person is more important than volunteering. Volunteering is a tool and I'm sharing it because my experience went through that. Uh, but I also definitely met a lot of people like even just working in, in, uh, in public. I mean, I've also had like jobs and uh, education uh, besides that of being an artist. It's now actually, I'm kind of using Corona so that I don't have any excuse uh, to not focus on my art and, uh, and like become 100% uh, self-sufficient with it. Guys, um, if any of you feels like having a question, something that you want to ask Mattia about what he's been sharing so far or like any other subjects. Oh, okay, you have more? I had more, but we can also go because it's 3.30 already and it's sunny outside. So if people are getting uh, tired, it's, uh, we can move on. I maybe have just a, a small note about ambitions and goals. And, I think it would be uh, nice, yeah, please. I, I, I believe that uh, like just actually on the base of what we just said, 
keeping your goal in mind is uh, super important, especially when you are not uh, uh, overachiever. Like you're not one, like I think most of us here, we're not those kind of people that we learn, uh, I don't know, a new skill every month and we are always studying something. We like to take time for ourselves, at least I do. And we like to hang out with our friends, with our family. And, um, and what I, and I, I had to learn not to feel guilty for, for doing things that I like, uh, that are outside my, my job. And I, I tell myself that the important thing is that I have, I live my life with my goal in mind. And I know that the choices I do for the long term are towards me being a, a self-employed uh, artist. And that's like something that sometimes it's easy to lose, uh, to lose uh, focus on. So I just wanted to mention it and then mention that as I just said, it's important to take breaks, to spend time with the people you love and to enjoy yourself and, uh, and to take detours sometimes. You wanna uh, go three months uh, in India, like to find yourself, to just do it. It's, it, when you come back, uh, I mean, of course, if you, start, if you just started your food truck, okay, maybe it's not a good time. But uh, uh, every once in a while, it's like it's very important to to, to take breaks, to fall in love, and uh, to take a, a trip. Uh, it it's like it's actually those kind of things. I believe that they enrich you, and then whatever thing you're doing, uh, you have a story. So it's like people are gonna be charmed. Like uh, I I saw it so many times with people uh, in food trucks because, because actually. I used to work in one and what was before Refn. And, uh, and like sometimes you go to a place just because the owner has a charm because it's traveled half of the world that has a lot of stories. And uh, so I think these things, they can even enrich you uh, professionally in a way. So yeah, that's it. That's the last one. <laughs> so you like any questions you have now and yeah, go ahead. <laughs> It's also this um, when you spend too much time within the field doing the same thing and like it may become oftentimes become very, you know, very skillful at it. But, you know, at some point also it starts becoming counterproductive in the sense that it becomes mechanical. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So uh, I think probably, I mean, that, that there is something beautiful in you know, coming out of it and like seeing other angles and, you know, maybe coming back and kind of, um, tweaking the previous process and like, you know, moving in new directions. So kind of like still get some um, motivation, inspiration to do new things. Yeah. Nice. Well, guys, do you have, uh, I mean, we are entering the session of the Q and A session. So you're more than welcome to ask questions. I want to add something. I don't, I don't want to question something, but I want to say something about guilties because we refer in the last minutes to guilties, not feel guilties. I think people, they feel guilties when they doubt their selves and their ex personal expectations and when they plan or create their expectations according to the others. So it's mostly listen to your instinct, let's say, and uh, let's uh, leave guilties away because it's not produced by us at the end. It's mm. produced by others or a self um, that goes against to us. That's it. Yeah. Thank you for this uh, inspiring dialogue and sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, me neither. I don't have a question because uh, the things which I wanted to hear seems like mostly I've heard and it actually has inspired in some ways. Uh, you brought the soul of the art into here. <laughs> and thank you for that. Uh, but, um, you know, things are different. What you're talking about is art and its activity and it's being live and it's very good, actually. I still, I, as I said, I felt it in here. So just imagine being in that field and working in that field or uh, having the talent to be in that field but things are different as I said for example for me uh, as 
Falman, uh, Plamen mentioned, I have been doing coding and stuff and the world in here, it's so different. It's so serious. It's so into studying. It's so into finding a job. We have people uh, for the importance of network. I have seen people who are in Denmark for 10 years, but because of not having a good network, they could not find job. Mm. It's the same time very, very weird for me. And it's very sometimes actually... Uh, I don't know, disappointing. The exact word is disappointed to see that, yeah, that person has the talent, has the skills. They are very pro. Actually, they are very pro. Some of them, they have master degree in computer science, which is uh, like the ultimate, but still because of not having the good network, they could not find the job. But uh, HYF as Crossing Borders, they're also very active and 